Dear all, welcome back to the class. In this session, we are going to discuss one of the smallest chapter, a circle. Okay, so in grade 9, you have studied uh, circles and different theorems. But in this year, we need to learn only two theorems. So let's move to the cha uh, chapter. So before starting the theorems, we'll go to the basic. First of all, what is the circle definition? What is circle definition? You know that circle definition is, uh, the circle is a collection of all points in a plane which are equidistant from a fixed point, which are equidistant from a fixed point. You can see that this is the points. And if I join these all points, I will get the circle. I will get the circle. And that fixed point is called, uh, and that fixed point is called uh, center and that fixed point is called the center now that fixed distance that fixed distance is called the radius that fixed distance is called the radius of the circle so this all things you know that then after radius we need to uh, uh, check it what is chord of a circle what do you mean by chord of a circle chord is the line joining yeah the line joining any two points on the circle line joining any two points on the circle the chord of a circle is a straight line that connects two points on the circumference of the circle that connects the two points on the circumference of the circle you can see that here a and b a and b are the points on the circumference of the circle circumference which means that boundary boundary okay now boundary point so a and b are two points on the circumference of the circle if you join these two points you will get chord then after defining chord we need to define diameter what is diameter diameter is very easy the longest chord the longest chord is called a diameter and the longest chord which passes through the center the longest chord which passes through the center is called a diameter so then you can see that you know this is a center and this will be radius therefore there is a relation between radius and diameter so what is the relation diameter is equal to diameter is equal to 2 times radius diameter is equal to 2 times radius now we need to check it what is a secant 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 is nothing but secant to a circle is a line which intersect a circle in two distinct points it says it's a straight line which intersect two points on the circle it's not a chord secant is a straight line which intersect two points on the circle you can see that there is one circle and straight line okay it's a straight line straight line which exactly intersect two points on the circle is called a secant Hope this is clear. Now, after that, we need to move to our main concept. What is that one? Tangent of a circle. Tangent. What is the tangent? Tangent to a circle is a line that intersects the circle exactly one point, which means that line is exactly touching one point, exactly touching one point. We can see how circle, okay, tangent is formed. There is a circle. Then you can see that exactly there is one touching point will be there. Touching point will be there. So that is called a tangent of a circle. After tangent, we need to differ. We need to check. You can see that here there are Exactly touching one point right that one point is called a uh, that one point is called a uh, point of contact that one point is called a uh, point of contact that one point is called a uh, point of contact hope all of you got the concept so let's move to the, our theorem 10.1 what is theorem 10.1 the tangent to a circle is a perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact very simple we need to prove that tangent is perpendicular to radius tangent is perpendicular to radius so we can draw a circle here we can draw a circle then we'll get it we can draw a circle here, then we will draw a tangent. We can see that there is a point of contact, there is a point of contact, that point of contact I am taking as P, that point of contact I am taking as P and AB is my tangent, AB is my tangent. Now when you consider this circle and center is O and the center is O, center is O and we can join OP, we can join OP, we can join OP. So, what are the information they have given? A circle with the center O and AB is the tangent. What is given here? So, given information is, given is AB is a tangent. AB is a, given information is AB is a tangent. AB is a tangent. AB is a tangent. AB is a tangent. Given information is AB is a tangent. Now, what we need to prove? To prove that OP perpendicular to AB. To prove, to prove. OP perpendicular to AB. OP perpendicular to AB. OP perpendicular to AB. For that one, there is a construction. Construction. What is that construction? No, okay, construction nothing but we need to consider two extra points on AB. So, I am taking Q and R. This is Q and this is R on AB. Consider Q and R on AB. Consider, consider Q and R on AB on AB. After that, join OQ and OR. Join OQ 
and OR. Join OQ and OR. Join OQ and OR. Now we can start the proof. Simple proof. Now you know that P is on the circle. Q and R is outside the circle. So I can write that OP is less than OQ. First one is OP is less than OQ. Why? OP, P is on the circle. So OP is radius and uh, so radius until this point is a radius and uh, this distance is more. So OQ is larger than OP, larger than OP. So I can write that OP is radius, OP is uh, radius, OP is radius. Now, similarly, this will be equation number one. And similarly, I can write that OR is OR is less than OQ. Oh, sorry, OQ is less than. Similarly, I can write OP is less than. OP is less than OR. OP is less than. Or same, radi uh, same reason. OP is radius. OP is uh, radius. OP is radius. Then this will be equation number two. This will be equation number two. Now, when you from okay, when you look at this equation number one and two, one and two, we'll get OP is shorter than OP is shorter than OP uh, OQ and over, which means OQ, OP is the smallest distance or shortest distance. So from here, by from one and two, we get from from one and two, from one and two, from one and two, we get from one and two, we get we get from 1 and 2 we get uh, op is the shortest distance op is the op is the shortest distance op is the shortest distance basically what is shortest distance shortest distance is called a perpendicular line perpendicular line therefore therefore op is perpendicular to ab therefore op is perpendicular to ab shortest distance is called a perpendicular line hope all of you got this question uh, sorry got this theorem now we can move to the next Theorem 10.2. Theorem what is Theorem 10.2? The length of the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. Circle are equal. So now we need to prove that the tangents drawn from an external point are equal in measure. So I'll draw a okay, circle. So here PA and PB are tangents, PA and PB are tangents. Now we need to prove that PA is equal to PB. So what is given? Given is, given information is, given is PA and PB are tangents, PA and PA and PB are tangents, PA and PB are tangents, PA and PB are tangents. Given that PA and PB are tangents, after that, what is, uh, we, we need to, to prove, to prove, to prove PA is equal to PB. PA is equal to PB. We need to prove that PA is equal to PB. And there is a construction. Construction, okay. A simple construction only. Join, center is O. Join OA, OB, OP. Join, join OA, comma, OB and OP. And OP. Now we can start the proof. You can see that there are two triangles here. What are the two triangles? Which are the two triangles? Tri uh, triangle PAO and PBO. Consider, 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 consider PAO, triangle PAO and triangle PBO. Consider triangle PAO and triangle PBO. I can write that PA is equal to P. Angle PAO is equal to angle PBO. What is the reason? Reason is tangent perpendicular to radius by theorem 1. So tangent, tangent is perpendicular to radius. Tangent is perpendicular to radius. So each angle will be 90 degree, 90 degree. And also I can write OA is equal to, OA is equal to OB. Then that is equal to radii. That is equal to radii. So OA is equal to OB. That is equal to radii. So we got it. Now PO is equal to PO. PO is equal to PO that is equal to common side that is equal to common side that is equal to common side. So PA is equal to PO, PO is equal to PO that is equal to common side. Now here there is a right angle then hypotenuse and one side. So by RHS congruence rule you can write that bus. so by RHS rule. Therefore by RHS rule RHS rule triangle 
triangle PAO congruent to PBO triangle PAO congruent to triangle PBO from here easily we can write PA is equal to PBY therefore PA is equal to PB reason is CPCT you know that what is CPCT corresponding parts of congruence triangles are equal corresponding parts of congruence triangles are equal so PA is equal to PB hope all of you got these theorems now in the next two classes in the next classes we will discuss uh, more questions uh, based on these theorems and different concepts so thank you